Hey family, so you've probably noticed that today's episode looks a bit different. And the reason for that is because I want to use my hosting week this week to test run my new show, Fulfillment. Allow me to break the name down for you. Full, because the world is full of interesting ideas, theories, and people, and I am a lifelong learner. I love coming across new things that either pique my interest or challenge me or just help me be a better person in life. Film because, well, this is a video podcast, but I also want this show to look and feel and sound more and more like you're taking in a film that you can also interact with. And lastly, ent, because I want to entertain you. So when you put those three elements together, you get fulfillment. And the actual word fulfillment is something that I think we're all chasing. So keeping that in mind, I'd like to dive into a topic that's been on my mind for a very long time. And that topic is black men who refuse to date black women based on negative stereotypes. Now, first and foremost, you can date whoever you want to date. Um, We as black people, we are not a monolith. We are individuals with individual preferences, and that's cool. What's not cool are the black men who feel the need to perpetuate a myth that black women aren't suitable partners. A few weeks ago, I sent out a poll on my Instagram story asking people what they thought about men who refuse to date black women based on negative stereotypes. And here are some of the responses. I know my son's dad's mom said she didn't want dark grandchildren from him. So in a way, he found women that weren't dark or mixed to have his children. Honestly, I'd rather be seen as a human being than a stereotypical blank girl. She uses some more identifiers here, and because I want to keep this completely anonymous, I'm just going to skip them. She then ends by saying, I'm so much more than that, and men, not just black men, need to see black women as women first. To me, it comes across more like the person sounds like they have issues with loving themselves, appreciating themselves, appreciating, you know, their skin color, you know, their complexion, and... It's, it's really, you know, negative when you hear grandparents or parents, aunts, uncles making these kind of comments. Because we have to remember too, like, little kids are listening as well. So imagine, you know, there is a grandchild who hears a grandmother making a comment like that. You know, oh, it's better to get, you know, marry someone or have grandkids with someone with, who's light skin. And let's say this child is dark skin. That can really affect their self-esteem and you know, make them feel less. Than. And kids do soak up everything you That's say, true. right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, if you've been around any kid, you might say something in passing and then like a week or day, even a day or an hour day, later, you're just right. like, what? I didn't even think. So, and subconsciously, when you kind of um, deliver those type of messages to kids and to people in the community, it's your subconsciously saying, um, we value these things more. We value the long hair. We value the light skin. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it shouldn't be that case. It shouldn't be that way. Because to be uh, to the thing about black people is like if you look at the spectrum mm-hmm. of a black person, right? You can see someone like as like Alicia Keys. Right. You know, she's right. light skin, but you know, yeah. she's still a black. She's still considered, you know, one of us. Like she's still a black person, right? And then you have people that are much darker, right? And we, there is still a black person, so we shouldn't place higher value on like Alicia Keys versus someone who's much darker. Mm -hmm. I think we should all, we're all part of the same family, the black family, and it's it's fine either way, right? So, I think it's another unfair way that black women are devalued. I think there are many men of all races who have very traditional notions of masculinity and a strong, outspoken woman challenges that notion. So many black women I know are just that, strong and outspoken. I think it's just too easy to see these traits as negative and move on. So I guess all that is to say that I think that many men who do not want to date black women because of the stereotypes are just not ready to put their own ego aside to share space with powerful women. This is a really good one, right? Mm -hmm. And it's one that I'm sure, like I've thought about before. Um, When I say, if I'm doing something and I say, okay, I don't want to um, face this specific challenge. Like, is it that I really don't like the challenge or is it what the challenge is gonna bring out in me that I'm trying to avoid? Mm -hmm. And when, uh, and she really brings that to the forefront and like, is it that they don't 
they think black women are too sh loud or whatever or too sh too strong mounted or whatever the case may be mm -hmm. or is it that they can't handle the challenge they don't want to um, be pushed to be something better so it's it's a powerful thought because I really do feel it's the latter that mm -hmm. they don't want to be pushed they don't want to be challenged um, they prefer to just you know kind of rest on their laurels as we say instead of you know being better like being pushed to be something more and I think right. I think that's 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 a sad state for any man to be in. Like as a as a man, I would want to be with someone who challenges me, who pushes me to be something better, to be something more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's my thoughts from that. It's a really good quote. Mm -hmm. And when you know, if there are men who truly have this opinion that you know they don't want to be with a black woman because simply because they're strong, they're outspoken, they challenge him, then. Yeah, fine. <laughs> That's good. Move on to the next one. Like, yeah. you're not a man that a strong, outspoken black woman would uh, would even want to be with. with. Like, he yeah. wouldn't even want to be with you. Because yeah. then she'll just do you as like, you know, you're some kind of pushover. Mm -hmm. You can't, you know, say what you think or you can't put your ideas out there. Then, yeah, she might just be like, forget you. And that's fine. I have a friend who feels this way. He says it's because he is not a stereotypical black man, so black women always clowned him or made him feel bad about how he was different. I understand how he can feel that way, but it's immature to assume all women from one race will think the same based on your personal experience. The world is a huge place filled with women from different walks of life. Not one race will have people that all act the same or think the same. It's almost ridiculous as an adult to believe otherwise to the point where you're excluding an entire race as an option. Never mind the ignorance of it, but limiting yourself is never good. I then asked her if hearing black men speak negatively about black women in regards to dating had any effect on her. And here's what she said. As a mother of a little black girl and a lover of black women, it does create some resentment. I won't lie. There are times when I see black men with white women and ignorance consumes me. I assume he is one of those black guys who hates black women. I don't know if this is true in the slightest, but I'm looking at him sideways now because hearing so many men say they prefer other races because X, Y, and Z now creates this narrative that all black men are like that. I guess it's a stereotype as a result of a stereotype. It's not right but it's something I can identify within myself. Yeah, a, a friend, I, I, the person I used to be friends with, they had like a bad experience with um, a black girl. And mm -hmm. after that, it was, it became all black girls are like that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they're hard to deal with. They don't um, value the the type of things he's, like he was into, cause he was into like, creative stuff and, and things mm -hmm. like that so like I've I've heard that statement but before but I think in the very statement she kind of answers that like one person does not represent a group right yeah. so um, and when I knew this friend I was not smart enough to like at that point to realize what was happening yeah right you I mean I mean was, this was over 10 years ago right, right? so I was just thinking, oh, like, it sucks that he doesn't want to date a black girl, but I wasn't seeing that. Like, this is such a toxic and, like, um, kind of poisonous attitude to have. Mm -hmm. Because he, he would go around and he would tell everyone else like that. Oh, all these, and, you know, he had a bad experience with, like, let's say a Trinidadian person. And he would be like, all these Trinidadian girls are just so X, Y, Z. And I'm like, mm -hmm. dang, that's not, that's. Now, looking back, that's not the way to go about it. Because, like, you have young friends who are in their teens as well, 17, 18, mm -hmm. 19, mm -hmm. thinking the same thing. And guess what? These guys, they go into the 20s, and these are the same guys that take up these type of attitudes, mm -hmm. right? And look down and bash black women. So it's it's really bad. Like, it's, it's poisonous. I'll start off by saying that if that's their personal preference, then cool. However, I'm pretty sure every race has a negative stereotype behind them if you really think about it. I hear this all the time. Apparently some of those black men believe that black women have more attitude, are way louder, and are more ratchet than other races. But honey, that's the furthest thing from the truth. A woman, black or not, can have a nasty attitude. And then another woman from that exact same race can have the most warm and welcoming demeanor and be the total opposite. 
I think there are a lot of strong black women out there who know what they want, know what they're not willing to tolerate, and have their ish together. And for some reason, I feel like it's somewhat intimidating to some men. By the way, I'm not referring to the women who really do need an attitude check. And I know that this can go further than attitude, but I guess my point is that I personally don't think race has to do with these things. I think upbringing, experience, and what an individual values has a lot to do with any negative stereotypes that may be associated with a black woman. But newsflash, any woman can fall victim to these stereotypes, not just black women. I think with this one, um, I totally agree whatever the negative stereotypes are that seem to be attached to black women mm -hmm. you can find it in any race you can get an asian girl who's loud and has an attitude you can get a white girl who's loud with an attitude you can get an indian girl who's loud and has an attitude mm -hmm. but i think the problem is like as the, as i was listening to this i think it's what the media portrays mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there's more of a stronger emphasis on you know, portraying the black woman as the loud, statue, aggressive, yeah. and, yeah. you know, with the attitude and doing all the snaps and all of that and everything, tapping for everything. so word. many shows. The yeah, black like that. Is the like, one is just why is she tapping all the down. time? Like, <laughs> she, uh, if you need to be shut down in the show, they'll they be need the black girl. Like, a white right. girl would be like the, the nice, the one who's in the romantic interest or whatever. Right. And her black friend would be like, you better tell him, you better yeah. shut down. Like, yeah, like, 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 always like why is it always a black girl, right? For as long as television has been around, audiences have been fed three caricatures of black females, the Mammy, the Sapphire, and the Jezebel. Here's a clip that briefly explains the three. The Mammy. You tell me who you want done, and I'll do the hell out of it. The Jezebel. Shut it up! You are such a big baby! And the Sapphire. Submissive, sexy, sassy three stereotypes of black women that return to our screens over and over again. The Mammy is probably the most familiar to people. It's usually a maid, heavy, taking care of the family. You is kind, you is smart, you is important. She is asexual, she doesn't have really a life of her own. She's really only there to support the family. And probably one of the most famous examples is Mammy from Gone with the Wind. Just hold on and suck in. Somebody who is always seeking out to put aside her own desires, her own needs for white families, white men, white women, white children. Meet Sugar Hill, sexiest, deadliest chicken town. <laughs> The second stereotype is the Jezebel, and that's someone who's generally oversexed. Is mysterious. Her only power is in her body and in the influence she has over men. Unattainable. And then finally, the Sapphire character, I think that's seen in TV more often than anything else. Get some Kleenex, wipe your nose, cause it ain't that damn sad. The Sapphire is usually sharp tongue, manipulative woman who emasculates her husband. <laughs> There was actually a character called Sapphire Stevens on um, the Amazon Andy show. And I guess you think you could cook, clean, and get along just fine all by yourself. I do. The representation of the angry black woman. And that's kind of metamorphosized to today where we just have sassy, angry black woman who doesn't take anything from anybody. So I think it's because of what the media portrays, right? Yeah. But if we really stop and think, have I had an Asian friend who was loud and yeah. with an attitude? Yes. yes. <laughs> Have I had an Indian friend who was loud and had an Yes. Like, so when we really look at, you know, our friend groups, well, that's if you're diverse. Yeah. Yeah. If you realize yeah. that you are not diverse, you don't have any black friends, you have no Indian friend, no white friends, that's something you need to work on, right? Yeah. That's yeah. a side note. But the point is, it's what the media portrays of black women, and I think that needs to change first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Because we are aware the only difference between a black person and a white person really boils down to the melanin in the skin, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't matter. Personality traits, characteristics, it's, you find that in every yeah. race, so. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's not quite like a, it's not quite a self-fulfilling prophecy, but it's close to it. It's, it's the concept of like, 
you're expecting something right so you walk right into it and mm. like the things the actions you take the things you take actually cause that thing to, <laughs> it's to like, come it's about like confirmation bias yeah, yeah confirmation word, bias yeah. is confirmation bias is is that right like well, you see the black woman and then you're you're, you're rude to her that's yeah. right because so then now she's obviously just like yo right. what's wrong with you and then you're like oh you see these black women no that's you were right the because, one that was rude to her right to exactly that's where it goes from confirmation bias to like a self-fulfilling because like whatever steps you take you're like oh like okay a perfect example is like mm. the president right the current president like yes. like trump like yes. if he's at the start he's just like um you know there's korea is, is going to be a problem for us there's going to be wars with korea and stuff and then so whenever he has relationship with them he's already hostile yeah, yeah. so that causes them to be hostile yeah. and that co- leads to more problem it's just an example but that's what happens in real life between people you, it's like you're you're looking for that one black woman to come up against you mm-hmm. or to like be defensive and then you're just like these black women or whatever but you kind of walk right into it what mm-hmm. did you expect so it's kind of the, the the quote is so powerful because it's it's sad that people walk around basically just kind of expecting black women to be this way and once they do you run off the handle like you see that's what these black women but then are. when they meet a black person who doesn't do that oh they gosh. forget ab- no but i'm saying something they forget about that person yeah. or oh, they'll yeah, think completely. oh yeah. yeah that was just an exception, exception. That was an anomaly. you were an exception mm-hmm. to the rule mm-hmm. no maybe that it's not that they're an exception to the rule. Maybe that's how the majority are. Yeah. But you're just focusing. You have tunnel vision, right. looking for the one that's going to be aggressive and loud or whatever. Right. That yeah, be. that's a good point. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like the things that fit your 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 narrative, your narrative. Mm-hmm. you're good with. But the ones that don't, you're just like, nah, that doesn't really work. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To the black men who refuse to date black women based on negative stereotypes. When you refuse to date black women based on their race alone, you punish the integrity of the many solely based on the unideal characteristics of the few. In doing so, you relinquish in yourselves the opportunity to cultivate lasting relationships with a group of women who are arguably the most uniquely qualified to identify with and as well share and relish in the lived experience of our inherent cultural implications, the strengths and struggles of our blackness. It would be a laughable fallacy if it wasn't so saddeningly short-sighted that the race of young women you are swearing off will soon rise to become the formidable mothers, courageous aunties, and strong-willed grandmothers whose unwavering love makes you revere your own, and yet you wouldn't see yourself with a person whose skin is a reflection of your mother's own radiance. It made me realize that the narrative and rhetoric that influence society's perception of black people carry a subconscious influence even in the black communities. It shows no one is exempt from potentially internalizing those biases and becoming a part of the chorus of voices that discredits the worth, value, and soul that is black people, and in this case, black women. And so it's truly a disheartening ignorance that the black man who is singularly the most falsely convicted and demonized member of society, who is forced to operate under the heavy swath of the broad brush used to paint him and his brothers as dangerous, whose very existence is criminalized, and who's had to watch men who look just like him be punished solely based on the color of their skin, solely based on negative stereotypes, would turn around unflinchingly and do the same to the black woman. And it's it's such a powerful, the whole quote is powerful, mm-hmm. but just that concept, like that fact that the, ma- the black man, mm-hmm. he's not exempt from, from doing that to his own sisters his own queens right. his own future wives and and so on he's not exempt from doing that and the sad saddest part is he is actually doing what the quote unquote masters did to him talk about it onto his, his onto his sisters right mm-hmm. his, to his own which is like whoa that is so powerful we could actually um help solve the problem rather than be part of it and then when she said that um, subconsciously, like even within our race, mm-hmm. we're being affected, mm-hmm. yeah. you also see that too. Because then sometimes now as a black person, 
or as a black woman when you're in certain settings yeah so let's say you're at work and something were to happen and like it truly is a case where you need to voice your opinion and speak yeah. out mm -hmm. you you think twice yep. you're just like oh my gosh if i say something if i respond you know they're gonna point me as the angry black woman, yeah, right? They're gonna right. put me into that category That's if I fair. say something. But truly, you have been, wrong. you know, wronged, yeah. right? And you need to speak up. Yeah. But because of this stereotype that's out there, some black women feel like they have to like monitor themselves yeah. even more <laughs> than mm -hmm. a normal person, right? Or they would have to put themselves lower or take up abuse, yeah. <laughs> right? Because yeah. they don't want to live up to that negative stereotype that's out there. So it does affect us even though we're not aware of it. So subconsciously, these negative stereotypes, they influence the way we act at times too. So I really like that point when she um, brought it up. Yeah, it's a powerful point. And to me, it's kind of speaks to the whole fact of like from the male perspective for us, like Troy, yeah. we have to make sure that we're not in any way complicit to that, right? Like right. we're not in any way adding to it because she's right like these are these women are our future um daughters or future doctors daughters, or aunties, whatever mothers yeah, yeah, aunties yeah. like people in the community the people, people in, in the politics community, yes. people making a difference like you don't want to look down on them in that way because then you're going to devalue every contribution they make to community to the yeah. community you're going to be like oh yeah it's just another black woman so we have to make sure we're not complicit in spreading this i would see it like as a cancer like Definitely. it's one of the oh. most um pernicious like problems that's been going through the black community it's like uh it's it's so deadly it's been going through from from time immemorial that the black women are loud they're toxic you don't yeah. want them to be around they're always going to snap at you or whatever it's been going on from time to time and 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 people have been just keeping it going so we have to try our best to stop it now like and it starts with each of us in our individual situation in our individual circumstances as, as, I don't know if it was this quote or the previous one. Yeah, there are some people that need attitude adjustment. Yeah. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But in addition to this, we can't go around carrying that baton, baton. If you are a black man who refuses to date black women, I encourage you to do some research and free yourself from this ignorance that you're holding so near and dear to your heart. I really want you to open up your eyes and, and see that even though you had a negative experience with one person in the past, that doesn't mean that everyone is gonna write you off. So don't write everyone else off. And if you are a young black woman, I want you to know that you are enough, all right? Like you don't need the validation of people who see you in a negative light. Their opinion never mattered in the first place. I want you to know that you are loved and admired by so many black men just like myself. And, you know, just just keep your head up, all right? So for me, to, you know, any black young men that might be out there thinking that, you know, all black women are X, Y, Z, I really don't have anything to say to you because you can keep your opinion if that's what you want. Mm -hmm. You know, as black women, we will continue to find the right people that will value us yeah. for who we are and appreciate our individuality and what's unique about us. So mm -hmm. to you guys, so be it. Mm -hmm. Do what you want to do. But to the black women out there, I will say, um, don't allow the things that, you know, these young black men may say to influence or affect you negatively. Don't allow it to break your self-esteem and make you feel as though you're not worthy of love because I do believe that there is someone out there who will uh, appreciate and value you for who you are. So don't lower your standards just because you hear guys saying like, oh, black women are this, that, and the other. No, continue to be yourself, true to who you are. As the last post said, if there is attitude adjustments that need to be made, make <laughs> yeah. them, mm -hmm. but just be the best version of yourself. Right, yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, just to kind of jump off from what Judy left on, I think for the, um, I, I'll start with the, with the young men actually. My encouragement would be to challenge yourself, like 
when you have these thoughts this is a good practice in regardless just in general in life, just in life. when you have a thought reflect like where is this coming from what am mm. i doing why am i thinking this right and yeah when whenever these negative thoughts come to you uh, like you know i don't want to be with any black woman or because of xyz because of that well not xyz because they're loud because they're mm. you know they're in your face they're abrasive or whatever really think about it as Trudy said earlier is my mom like that is my family like that if they are fine look look don't just um, place that on all black women right. the point is black women are human beings just like you are just mm -hmm. like we all are right like just like people of other races so challenge it and and realize that in most cases these stereotypes are coming from somewhere um, you may not think about it right now but it, it's it started years ago it came from somewhere where people wanted us to have these certain views of black women mm -hmm. so please like to to my fellow males don't be part of the problem be part of the solution mm -hmm. worst case scenario let's say even if all black women were loud and abrasive how does you going around spreading this spreading this help the situation why not be part of the solution even if it was a problem, let's start with solving the situation. Let's start with talking with people, like you know, like actually hearing their their issues and so on, and working with them rather than um, keeping the problem going. And to the black woman, I I don't think much needs to be said to you. To be honest, I think like if you're in a situation where um, people are looking down upon you for voicing your opinion or anything, just know that your opinion is valuable. Just like the white CEO's opinion is valuable, yours is valuable as well. Just mm -hmm. as your black um, person you're in a relationship with, black man you're in a relationship with, his opinion is valuable, yours is valuable as well. So never be afraid to stand up for yourself in a respectable way. Mm -hmm. Never be afraid to voice your opinion in a respectable way. Mm -hmm. And I think once you do that, and you're true to yourself, you're gonna see that things will work out in the end. As Shuri said, you're gonna find someone who values you for who you are. If you're in a workplace, you're gonna find a workplace that values you for who you are and the contribution only you uniquely can make. So that's what I would say to that. With that being said, I wanna thank you so much for listening to this week's episode in particular. Keep in mind that this was the test run and it will get better. I guess you can say that this was me dipping my toes in the water. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, make sure to follow us on Instagram to keep up to date with all of our posts. Bye-bye!